All right, everybody, welcome back to the shop today. What we've got on the bench is a BC Rich Mick Thompson Hate Warlock Guitar 7, kind of a mouthful. Uh, my customer brought it in to me for a pro setup. This thing's been road hard and put up wet, man. I mean, it's not in bad shape just needs to be cleaned up I'm sure the neck needs an adjustment I just pulled it out of the case uh, just a few minutes ago so all right so uh, I'm gonna get some tools out and get set up and we will be back momentarily all right here we are back so I was actually surprised to see that this is a fender scale I was thinking it'd be more maybe along the lines of Gibson but nope it's a 25 and a half inch scale so I've got my straight edge setting on it here right now, uh, and the neck is way out of whack. So it's definitely going to need the truss rod needs to be tightened. So let's go ahead and take these strings off real quick, uh, and then we'll move on to the next step. You know, I always liked the look of these Warlock headstocks, but I always hated uh, the way the tuning keys are. The E, D, G, and E string tuning keys ride right on that damn point. And it makes it kind of difficult to use a string winder on them without pinging the side of the damn headstock so I give them A for effort and D for result on that so alright we're just going to clip these off right here at number 12 we're going to clip them off right on the hate I know you guys are not familiar with these guitars there is I don't know if I can do this without messing something up but right there is a pearl inlay that says hate I think they're referring to the uh, the tuning key placement on this headstock so all right let's get these things off oh yeah I can already tell man that uh that bottom E string was just wedged down in that nut so I don't know what uh, what gauge that is we'll oop the A string as well so we're gonna throw the micrometer on these real quick and we'll uh, we'll see what they are stand by see what we got here dang that's a 46 I would have thought it was in the 50s 46 36 26 yeah 46 36 26 so all right so, let me find this string before I trip on it for the rest of the day. So, 46, 26, 36. So, let's see what we got over here on the string wall. That looks like that thing is going to get a set of tens on it. I'll, uh, I'll hit the other three just to confirm that seventeen thirteen 
10. Yep, there you go. So it did have a set of 10s on it. That's what I thought when he brought it over and we opened the case and I did a visual inspection. I told him that it felt like 10s, but uh, we would measure them. Just to make sure, uh, I don't think he's played this thing for a few years. It's just been kind of rattling around in the case there. So, uh, these strings are the kind of strings you would find on a cheap old acoustic guitar that, or maybe, maybe even electric that's been banging around in a pawn shop for about three or four years. Everybody wants to pull it down and play it and they don't buy it and then they just hang it back up and just got crappy strings feel like barbed wire. That's what these feel like. So, all right, so we got that. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to take that truss rod cover off. Let's go ahead and pop this truss rod cover off here real quick. been so long since I worked on a BC Rich I kind of don't remember what adjustment tool I'm going to need for the all right looks like standard issue Allen so with the strings off let's go ahead and check this thing again just make sure we saw what we saw yeah we're gonna put a little bit of relief in it or actually take a little bit of relief out. So let's come up here, maybe this one. That's it, yeah, that thing was completely loosened. Give it about three eighths of a turn. Put this back on there and let's see what we got. All right, that's looking pretty good, but it was so bowed. I might give it just a little bit more. I mean, the uh, the truss rod was completely loosened when we just looked at it. So I might give it just a little bit more. And we'll take a look there and see. All right, yeah, that's looking good. I don't feel any give in it so we can set that up here all right so the next thing we'll do now that we got the neck straight is we'll give it a fret rock real quick now that one's kind of bad right there so let's go ahead let's mark that where's my sharpie about right there. Let's check this one. That one. These were not terribly expensive guitars, so I would about imagine, and my customer is a casual player at best, so I would about imagine that there's never been any work at all done on this guitar, maybe just changing strings. And wiping it down every once in a while so alright well we are about half 
halfway. This one here. So we have pretty much reached my cutoff. That's one, two, three, four, five, that's six. So my standard rule of thumb is if I get to five, I'm just going to pretty much do them all. Uh, it's actually a little bit quicker to do them all once you hit five, six frets. Uh, it, it's just too tedious to go in there. If it was one or two, yeah, go in there hit both of them, two, three of them, no big deal, knock them out. Once you hit five, six, seven, eight, and I've still got five frets to go and I'm already hit six. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, that's a quarter of the fretboard. So I'm just gonna go ahead and mark all of these like this. So now we've got them all marked. My hand kind of took those first few off. So all right, the good thing about this is it is a rosewood fingerboard. So I'm not gonna bother taping it off at this point. So I'm just going to use my little block here. I've got 400, 600, 1000, and 1200 all on one block. So I'm going to start with the 400 and just kind of actually before I do that, I'm going to take this uh, pickup off. Alright, we got that taped off now. So we're going to go ahead and start with the 400 here. And we're just going to run it across those frets like that. If you can see but it hasn't even touched Let's see 12 13 14 15 16. it hasn't even touched the 18th fret yet so that fret was extremely low so there's a four let's bump it up to six
Take it up to a thousand. and see where we're at now. Looking good so far. I think this is where we're going to start having problems. Right there. That's not too bad. All right, that'll work. So, all right. So, the next thing we're gonna do. So, I'm gonna get my crown and polish tool out here. Got my crown and polish tool. If y'all been following my videos, y'all know about my little block here. So, so that one's about had it. So let's go ahead and set it up with this one here. We're gonna start off with some 120. Just kind of rub it across and press like that. some 180 a little bit of 220 Finish it off with a little bit of 320. Need to order me some new foam pads here. got that done so the next step is going to be come in with our uh, fret eraser uh, so let me go get those real quick we're 
we'll start with 400 since we already took these to 320 you're just going to just kiss the top of them frets you don't have to push hard you're just getting in there nice and easy you know what these frets are low enough I may get a fret guard May go ahead and use a fret guard for these here. Just to keep that fingerboard nice. All right, so that is a uh, that's up through 400 on the frets. That's a uh, 120 through 400. So I will take it the rest of the way, all the way to 8,000, uh, and I will be back in a few, and we'll continue. All right, I got the frets polished all the way up to 8,000 grit. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little uh, oil treatment on the fingerboard. And we're going to try to get some of this crud off of it. I don't know what kind of wood is on the fingerboard, but pretty sure it's not rosewood. So we're just going to put just a little bit on there, about like that. Work it in. Let it sit on there for a little while. So while we're waiting on that, we're going to go ahead and give this thing a little wipe down with a clean rag. So we got a clean rag here.
while we up here and make sure these are tightened up. Alright, everything looks good on that. And before we put that truss rod cover back on, let's uh, just make sure our neck is still straight. Alright, looks good to me. So we can go ahead and put this truss rod cover back on. Pretty cool truss rod cover. And before we do too much of anything else, I want to take a look at these nut slots here. They uh, they were binding up on those tins. So I'm gonna get my nut files out here and. Uh, see if we can't figure out what the heck's going on with that so first thing you want to do when you're working on your nut tape off here you don't want to put a scratch in your head stuck if you're not paying attention to what you're doing so that first one was a 46, so I've got a 46 nut file here. Uh, you can get these all over the place. I got this one at Stu Mac. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of run it through there. Yeah, that's why it was binding. Let's, uh, let's see what happens. If you save your cut strings, you can uh, you can use those for the uh, to check. That's our forty six right there. Let's see. Still grabbing a little bit on the top, so what I'll do is I'll take this little fret end dressing file and just kind of don't really want to make the slot any deeper. I uh, just want to stop this E string from binding in there. Seems to be binding on that back side there. So what we could do is we could take our 36 and just on the on the back side of the nut. So this is going down the guitar. This is going up to the headstock on that back side and kind of angle it down and just lightly kiss it.
still want to get hung up in there so let's use this here just a little bit I like to use the fret in dressing file because it's smooth on either side so you don't have to worry so much about making your nut slot any deeper this will just kind of help widen it up just a little bit so something is going on in there let's see what it is Could be just the very top of that slot. But you can hear it kind of popping down in there. So, alright, so we'll get the big gun out. I've got this big diamond grit file that I break out. Again, I don't want to make that slot any deeper. I just want to kind of still want to pop in there. So. Well, I guess we'll just keep working it with this thing.
All right, so we got that. So, all right, so the next one, I think the, uh, the A string was kind of sticking in there as well. Yeah, real bad. So let's take our 36 file. That's good. And maybe our D string might have been sticking a little bit as well. Nope, D's good. So, alright. So, we've got the nut slots filed now. Go ahead and throw all these strings in the trash again. So the next thing we'll do, and uh, you can see a couple of spots right here where I hit that tape. That would have been dings in the truss rod cover or the headstock. So that's why you always double tape off before you start doing crazy stuff like that. So alright, so the next thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and get this thing strung up. It's got a Les Paul Jr. special style uh, wrap around tailpiece bridge. So pretty, pretty straightforward, self-explanatory. So I'll go ahead and get this thing strung up, and we will be back momentarily. All right, I got new strings on here. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set the string height. It's about 464. That one's a little high. That's about 464. So. Alright, so the next thing you do will be tune it up and set the intonation. So I will go ahead and tune it off camera. New string, so it's probably going to take a couple minutes. So I will be back in. Alright, so what we're going to do now is we're going to set the intonation. We got the action set. We're going to check the intonation now. I got new strings, got them stretched. flat so we're gonna need to back this up just a little bit here It's kind of a pain in the butt to get in here with these things. 
the way these damn bridges are. That's good. That's good. That one's, that one's a little bit off. So let's get in there on that one. Let's try that and see what happens. Pretty close. That's good. So, all right. So, what we'll do now is we'll just kind of give it a dry ear test. Just see what it sounds like. All right, so I am curious as to what the radius is on this damn fingerboard. It feels almost flat. So let's check that real quick. Just to satisfy my own curiosity, I want to see what the hell this thing is. Start with a 15. Well, it's not flat for sure. Looks like a 14 there. Yeah, it's a 14. 14 inch radius. So, alright, so there you go. Just for future reference, it's a 14 inch radius on these things. So, all right, so uh, the last step would be to wipe everything down nice and shiny like a brand new guitar and throw it back in the case and get it ready for delivery to the customer. So, uh, appreciate everybody hanging out with me today. Like I say, uh, we did a pro setup on this BC Rich Mick Thompson Hate Warlock Guitar 7 Signature Series. So, uh, pretty cool guitar. Uh, it's been a while. So probably the last BC Rich I worked on was probably early 90s, maybe. 91, 92, somewhere around in there. So, it has been a while. I did paint a Warlock maybe seven years ago, seven, eight years ago. I uh, camouflaged uh, a friend of mine's Warlock. But I, it has been at least probably 25 26 27 years since i've actually worked on a bc rich 
So, and I think that was a Rave 2. Rave or a Rave 1 or a Rave 2 uh, guitar that I had back in the day. So anyway, so all right. So uh, we straightened the neck. We cleaned everything up. We treated the fingerboard with some uh, some F1 oil. We leveled the frets. We uh, recrowned them, polished to 8,000 grit. We set the string action or height uh, to 464 straight across the board. Uh, there is no way to really radius these particular saddles on this. It's a Gibson style uh, stop bar, tailpiece, bridge, tunematic, all wrapped up into one. So you kind of set your heights on your two studs and that's the the saddles should be radius yeah they are i i can see uh the low e saddle here i can't see that in the camera the low e saddle sets a little lower than the a the a sets a little lower than the d the d and the g are about the same height the b sets a little lower than the g and the e sets a little lower than the b uh that is a good sign uh, that it's not a cheap bridge most of the cheap bridges you get from China for like six bucks that you're not gonna find that the saddles are radius themselves uh, so the way you can do that is by raising your bridge up a little bit higher than what you would say a 64th higher than what you would need to and then you can uh, deepen the slots on the individual saddles themselves to create your radius there but these saddles are actually set higher from top to middle to bottom or bottom to middle to top so that that's a pretty good sign that they didn't skimp on that anyway so all right well I appreciate everybody hanging out if you like the video please like the video don't forget to subscribe drop some comments let me know if y'all like what I'm doing uh, and uh, I will have another guitar on the bench here soon. I got a buddy of mine blowing up my phone. I guess his dad wants a, a, a Fishman a transducer pickup installed on his Telecaster. So that will probably be the next on the bench video I shoot. will probably be that one. Uh, but I've got several other guitars over here that are kind of at different stages that I'll be throwing up here in the coming weeks. So anyway, all right, we're going to sign off from Patriot Guitars in Hammond, Louisiana. Thank you all.